Some of you may remember uh, Jackie Robinson wrote the uh, color barrier in Major League Baseball years ago. Uh, he was the first African American to, to play, and he faced a lot of opposition at that time. Uh, he would go to, to ball fields and he would be booed, he would be jeered, he would be called all kinds of names. Uh, wasn't a real pleasant experience for him, but he persevered. And one day in his home stadium in Brooklyn, he he created, he, he made an error. Uh, and he stood at second base and his own fans booed him. His own fans uh, called him names and, and were ridiculing him. And this went on for a little bit. And he just, his head was hung in, in despair. And, and the shortstop by the name Pee Wee Reese walked over to him. put his arm around and face the crowd together. And later on, Jackie would say that that arm around him saved his career. Now, some of you are sitting there thinking, man, I sure would like to have a friend like that. And some of you are saying, I'm glad I got a friend like that. But what I would challenge you to do today is to say, I sure would like to be a friend like that. Friendships, important, right? Important stuff. Having a friend, being a friend is important. It's an integral part of who we are and what we do. They're important to our being. We were created for a relationship. Not only a relationship with God, but a relationship with others. And today we're going to talk a little bit about friendships. Now friendships, to most of us, we think about good times and, and casual relationships we've had for years and people we've known, but in truth be told, most of those people are just really acquaintances. They're not really, not really friends. And this day of, of Facebook, some of you are on Facebook, you can have all kinds of friends on Facebook. You just got to look at things and say, I'll be your friend. Okay, I want to be your friend. And I... When that thing was first coming out, my daughter was saying, you know, I'm about to reach my limit of friends. I said, well, I said, well how many friends do you have? How many, what's the limit? I didn't know it was a limit on friends. She said, 5,000. I said, how do you get 5,000 friends? I said, how do you, how does, you know, she was well known, so I mean, she had a lot of people want to be her friend. But how do you, I would say they're kind of superficial friends, but they don't really know her too well. I think most of us, uh, it was once said by Matt, most people are lucky they can have five good friends in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. Five people you can call in the middle of the night and they'll actually pick up the phone. <laughs> and not only will they pick up the phone, they'll listen to your problem and they're getting dressed while they're doing it because they know that you're going to need their help. Five good friends. I think most of us would be blessed if we could have five good friends. Wouldn't you? I think if you have one, you are. If you have one, and that's true. That's true. One good friend is good. Five should be our goal. But how many, how good a friend are you? You know, one of the things about having a good friend is you have to be a good friend, right? It's a two way street, as is all, all relationships, a two way street, right? You, know, you kind of get into it, what you put into it, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about that today and see what the scriptures have to say about being a good friend. How do you be a good friend? You know, we all hope to have a good friend, but how do we be a good friend? The, the scripture here today tells us what? Two are better than one. Two are better than one. For the fruits of the lake. Now what does that mean? Two are better than one. Two opinions better than one? Are two opinions better than one at your household? <laughs> All right, we we'll put that in. All right, I got it. Two are better than one. They hold each other up. They hold each other up. <laughs> we support each other, right? And you know, and, and a lot of people, you hear that, that actual uh, scripture read at, at weddings. And sometimes, you know, our best friend is actually our spouse. You know? They, they know it's definitely better than anybody else. They know our weaknesses, yet they're there anyway. Right? 
They know our good times, they're there in the good times, and they're there in the bad times. Right? And that's what, that's what we're talking about. But what do they do? Two is better than one. Two is better than one. Because they're there for support. And we're supposed to be that support for each other. You know, I've seen in the business world where friends will use friends to get ahead. They'll climb on each other's backs. They'll stab each other in the back to get ahead. Now, how many of you want that? That's not the kind of friend we want to be. No, we need to be friends that do things for other friends. You say, well, what do I need to do for my friend? You can start off with something very basic. Something you don't have to go tell your friend to do. Pray for them. Every time you pray for yourself, pray for your friend. Everything you ask for yourself, ask it for your friend. When you ask for, for a blessed family, bless their family too. When you ask for your finances to be blessed, ask for their finances to be blessed too. When you ask for good health, ask for good health for them too. You give a point. Anything that's good enough for you should be good enough for your friend, right? The next thing you can do is encourage them. Don't, please, don't ever underestimate what a word, a kind word, will do for someone. It lifts the spirit like nothing else. To know that someone cares or someone believes in you is a great gift to give someone. It doesn't have to be this grand speech about how wonderful someone is. It can be a kind word that you pass on each day. I'm so proud of you. I really believe in what you're doing. I think you're on the right track. I think that's going to work out. Small work. You look very nice today. Small work. How do they make you feel? Have you ever had anybody say something to you that just lifted your spirit for the whole day? Just in passing, just a little word of encouragement. Small word. Just something. Ladies, you're always looking for it. You dress nice. You come in, don't you want somebody to say it? That looks nice today. You look nice today. That. that color goes well with your eyes. Don't you look, don't you, you're looking for that, right? We want to hear that. Right? Don't we? We do. Let's be honest. A little honesty here at church is okay. You know that. Right? We want, we, want, we want to feel good about ourselves. We should encourage. The Bible tells us. Encourage one another and build each other. Right. Doesn't say anything about it. Let's go tear down some people today. Right? Doesn't say that. But you want honesty to be in your work, right? You want to tell, if you're going to build somebody up, you want to be telling the truth. You don't want to be telling somebody they can sing when they can't sing, right? You know, tell them, that's going to end up on American Idol. That's how it's going to work out. You're going to tell somebody they can sing, and the next thing you know, they'll be on American Idol making a fool of themselves because you told them they can sing. Be honest with them. See, I feel sorry for those people on American Idol who can't sing. Because I know that they don't have any friends. You can't have any friends to get up there and sing. On Mary's Idol, when you can't sing, because somebody, if you had a friend, would have told you, hey, that's not a good idea. You know? We want to encourage people, but we want to encourage them with, with things that are true. You know? They, there's enough good in everyone to find good good in someone, right? If you look hard. But we want to encourage them. We want to, we want to make them feel good about themselves. We want to make them feel good about the day. And that's contagious. You ever notice how a smile is contagious? Have you? you ever had somebody smile at you? Yeah. Other smile at you. Another kind? Yeah. Yeah. My collar? My collar? Right? Thumbs up. They're smiling. That's I don't know what they're smiling about, but they're smiling. So, also, you're smiling. You're smiling. I used, to, I used to have my kids would get down and tell you, I used to, I say, they come in, they'd be all down, and I say, what's practice our life? So I'm like, Dad, get out of here. I'm like, no, what's practice our life? And I start laughing. Just, but he laughed at this. <laughs> and pretty soon, they were laughing. We were all laughing. It doesn't take much, does it? To change the atmosphere in a room? Just a little effort. You want to practice your laugh? I'll see you trying to nice. <laughs> but that's all it takes. A little encouragement goes a long way. Never underestimate what a little bit of encouragement will do for your children. They love to hear you're proud of them. 
They want to know you approve of them. It's important to them. It's important as well to your friends. They want to know that they're doing okay. That you care about them. Right? Don't you like those calls? If you like them, then you should you should give them. Right? It's kind of the golden rule of relationships. If you don't want to be gossiped about, don't gossip. Pretty good rule, huh? If you don't want to be lied to, don't lie. This is hard stuff. If you want to be treated with respect, then treat others with respect. That's right. This isn't complicated stuff. Even I can think of this. Right? This is easy stuff. It's relationships and friendships. But we have to remember that it's important to be a good friend. Right? What does the next verse tell us in that? It says that if your friend falls down, stomp on them, right? <laughs> Kick them out of the down. Is that what it says? Lift them up. Pick them up. That's right. When your friend falls, pick them up. Why is that important? Because one day you're going to be the one who falls. And you're going to be hoping, you're going to be praying that somebody's going to pick you up. Because we all fall at some point. Anybody here not fall down, need to be picked up? I'm going to hang out with you because I won't be there to pick you up when you fall. It's, it's coming. It's just a matter of time. We all fall. But we all need help at some point. And so many people, when we fall, what happens? I'm out. <laughs> Got to go. It's nice knowing. Can you help me move? Got to go. Sorry, I'm busy. You know, we're all, we all fall. And that's when you really find out who your friends are. You know, a lot of people think friends are just those people that you gather with to have a good time. You know, you go to the ball game with, and y'all cheer for your favorite team, you know, or you invite them over for the 4th of July barbecue, or have a picnic, or those are, those are your friends, right? They make you laugh, they make you feel good, those are your friends. But what happens when they get that 3 o'clock call? <coughs> they pick up. Because those are your real friends. Your real friends are the ones that are with you when you're down. And if you're a real friend, then you're with somebody when they're there. Right? You know, I have a lot of friends and I enjoy laughing. And I enjoy being around them. Or I have a lot of people I know, I guess. Or maybe I shouldn't say. Maybe they're acquaintances. I don't know. Some of them are uncool. But you know, uh, and we have some good times. I said, but my best friends aren't the ones that make me laugh. And are there when, when times are good. My best friends are the ones who have also cried. Those are my best friends. Who are there during the hard times. Who are there when I experience sadness or when I'm hurt. And they're there with me. Those are my real friends. Those are the ones I can count on. Now the question is, are you a real friend? Are you a real friend? But there's more reason to pick people up than just that. <coughs> than just that we'll go through it too. Because there's somebody watching. Did you know that? We got some little eyes right here. Just saw them a few minutes ago. And they're watching. And they're learning. Because that's how kids are. They learn from watching adults be adults. And they want to know all about being a friend. So what do they learn from watching you? Do they learn about loyalty or disloyalty? Do we teach them that, hey, it's okay to talk about your friends as soon as they leave the room. That's good, because they're not in the room anymore. We can just talk about them. Do they, do they learn that, that we just desert our friends when possessions become more important? Or what other people would think. I would like to support him, but you know other people want to talk about me if I do. Good talk. You want my full name? I don't care. We've got to learn to stand up for our friend. To be a good friend. So when they're watching and they're learning, 
You're passing a legacy on to them of what it means to be a true friend. How important is that? Where did you learn to be a friend? How did you learn to be a friend? By watching other people. Right? How did they learn? By watching you. You say, well, I don't want to watch me. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a job. You got it. Whether you want it or not. So we need to learn to pick up our friends when they're down. We need to be there all the time. Good times, bad times, right? Even the little ones know that. They said, even when times get tough, they're there. They're all together. What is that last verse? Or what is the next verse? It says, it says if two lie down together, they'll keep warm. But one will be, how can one be warm alone? Hmm. You know, there's a lot of cold times in our life, isn't there? There's a lot of times when we feel like we've been left out in the cold, that we've been abandoned, that we're all by ourselves. Sometimes we hit those hard times. Sometimes it's in a relationship. Sometimes it's with your health or your finances. But we all come to those hard times, right? And we need a friend. And those are times that our friends' ships are challenged. Again, getting back to those challenging times. Chuck Swindoll shared a story uh, I was reading, and he was talking about an old army buddy of his that he had uh, he had seen. He had, the guy had discovered, had, had been saved after he left the army, and he was really surprised because the guy in the army was really a character. And he was known for his cursing and his womanizing and drinking and, and frequenting the bars and, and, and just a wild time or a good time, Charlie, depending on how you meet him. But he had come to know Christ. and, 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 and and Charles said he had met up, or Chuck said he had met, had met up with him uh, uh, years later. And the guy was sharing his story with him. He had been saved and he had changed his life. He said, but you know, I kind of miss it. You know, I kind of miss the uh, being able to go to the bars and, and uh, <coughs> you know, share my stories and share my, my problems with people. And uh, I haven't found anything like that in the Christian life. A place where I can go and, and just tell my story and not be judged. And not have someone preach to me or quote me a Bible verse. I haven't found that. Just that, that open uh, acceptance like that. And Charles wanted to say that he had read an a, a, a article not too long ago that the bar is actually probably the biggest counterfeit or, uh, to church. That it, that that's where people go when they have problems. That that they that the that the bar offers you know beer or alcohol instead of grace. That it offers an escape from reality as opposed to reality. How is it that a bar can cover people more than us? Do we need to use real communion wine? Is that the deal? I don't think it has anything to do with the alcohol. I think it has to do with you know, not being judged. Where people can come in and they can they don't have to feel like we're there to beat them up. Now, I'm not saying you say, wait a minute now, you know, there's some things that that uh, people do that I just can't accept. Well, I'm not asking you to accept your friend's sin, I'm saying accept your friend. If you're going to be a friend, be a friend. Love the sinner, hate the sin. Right? You still have to love the sinner. You don't have to love the sin. As a matter of fact, a good friend probably would love the sin. Right? You want to see him get their life right. Right? But we have to do it in a way that shows our love for them and not our judgment. But we're not beating them up. Maybe that's one of the problems with the church. Maybe we just like beating people up too much. Stepping on toes. I can do that myself once in a while. I just see how. Right? But maybe that's a problem. I don't know. Maybe that's a problem with our friendships. Maybe we're just not getting it right. You think about it. How do you want to be treated? 
When you come with a problem, with a real problem, are you looking to be judged? Or are you looking for help? So when someone comes to you with a problem, a real problem, are you hearing with your ears? Or are you just looking for the verse to get with? Right. People want real people. People want people who understand <coughs> that we all fall. That we all fall short. That there are no perfect people here. If you're perfect, this pew up here is always reserved for you. The very front. And no one has ever filled it. <laughs> We're not. We're broken people, right? They're looking for a place where they can come and say, you know what, I'm sunk. I'm at the end of my rope. Made some mistakes. I'm broken. I need to be healed. I need something that a bottle's not going to get me. I need God's grace. We need to let them know about God's grace. We need to let them know there's an alternative to that bar. And it's a friendly, and it's an open church. A church where they can come and, and not be judged. Because I'm not here to judge. That's God's job. I'm not applying for it. Right? How good friends are. You know, we have a friend in Jesus. There's even a song about that, I think. What a friend we have in Jesus. We have a friend in Jesus. We have a friend in God. That when we were broken and we had a problem, or even before we even knew we had a problem, God came and took care of it, right? He sent his only son to die for your sins. Am I? You see, we're all in it together. It's not an individual thing. And sometimes I think that's what's wrong with friendships. Too individual. Everybody wants what's best for them, but not what's best for the friendship. But God took care of us, right? God was kind of like Pee Wee Reese. When we were down and out, He came, He put His arm around us. He said, we'll face this together. Let's take care of it. We can overcome this. We can overcome the noise of the crowd. Don't care what people think. Don't care what people say. We can overcome this. <coughs> Is that the kind of friend you are? I hope so. I hope everyone here is a friend like that. I hope that's what we are for folks. I hope when we meet people and they, they get to know us and they know that's the kind of person we are. That we're loving. We don't care what other people think. We don't care what God thinks. He's our only judge. We're going to take care of business. And we're going to stand beside our friends through the good times and the bad times. Through the thick and thin. We're going to make it work. Are you that kind of friend? Would you like to have a friend like that? Anybody need one of those friends? Anybody need a friend like that? Well, no? One, one, two, six. Yes, put your hands there. I think most of us would like to have a friend like that. I am one like that. Excellent. Can I have a <laughs> We all need a friend like that. And some of us do have friends like that. And you know what? Some of you are friends like that. And I applaud you for that. But if you're not a friend like that, I challenge you to be that kind of friend. If you have if you have kinks in your armor, work them out. Work them out. The world needs friends like that. They need people like that. More and more each day. Because every day I turn on the news, what I see is a lot of brokenness. So they need a lot of fixers. three of them right here. <laughs> are you up for the task? I think you are. I know most of you are pretty good folks. Some of you I just met some of the judgment still happened. <laughs> <laughs> not judging, not judging. Okay. All of you have the potential to be a good friend. But we can step up and fulfill your potential. 
I challenge you to do that. I challenge you to do that this week. Look at your friendships. Have you let things get in the way of your friendships? Have you ever, ever used to have a friend? You know, we just didn't agree on something. I hadn't talked to him in years. Mm-mm. Step on some toes, I can see. <laughs> All right, I get off. Challenge is here for new old friendships. Pray for those people if nothing else. Can we be better friends? Can we be friends? Amen. Anybody here want to be my friend? <laughs> be my neighbor? Anyone? <laughs> it's a challenge. It's not easy. You say friendships are easy, but they're not. They're not. It's work. It's like a marriage. It's not easy. It's work. You have to work at it, right? You have to put some effort into it. If you don't, when the other person's putting all the effort in, you're just receiving. Right? We both need to work. Just like friendships, we both need to work. And you know who's working all the time? God. And he's working on his relationship with you. And you need to work on your relationship with him. And to become a better Christian is to become a better friend, a better brother, a better husband, and a better wife. And to answer to so many broken folks. <laughs>